Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your host Shenandoah Briscoe and today we are going to be covering Joshua 16 through 18 and Luke 2 1 through 24. Father I just ask for clarity of voice and speech recognition so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and those who have tuned in today in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen. Allotment for Ephraim and Manash. Joshua 16. The allotment for Joseph began at the Jordan, east of the springs of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went from Bethel, that is Luz, across over to the territory of Archites in Adaroth, descended westward to the territory of Jephelitz, Jephelitz, as far as the region of Lower Beth Haran, Haran and to uh, Gezer, ending at the Mediterranean Sea. So Manash and Ephraim, the descendants of Joseph, received their inheritance. This was the territory of Ephraim according to its clans. The upper Beth Haran and continued to the boundary of their inheritance went from Arthroth Adar in the east to upper Beth Haran and continued to the Mediterranean Sea. From Makatamratha on the north it curved eastward to Tenehath Shiloh, passing by it to Jordan, passing by it to Jonah on the east. Then it went down from Jonah to Ertoth, Adaroth, and Nera, touched Jericho, and came out at the Jordan. From Tupa, the border went west to the Kana ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. This was the inheritance of the, two, of the tribe of the Ephraimites, according to its clan. It also included all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Manasites. They did not dislodge the Canaanites living in Gezar. To this day, Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced labor. Joshua 17. This was the allotment for the tribe of Manash as Joseph's firstborn, that is, for Machir. Manasseh's firstborn, Machir, was the ancestor of the Gladiites, who had received Gilead and Bashan because the Mechorites were great soldiers. So this allotment was for the rest of the people of Manash. The clans of Ebizer, Hel Helik, Azrael, Shem, Sheshem, Hephar, and Shemidid, Shemida, sorry. These are the other male descendants of Manesh, son of Joseph by their clans. Now, Zeolopedhead, son of Hepra, the son of Galid, the son of Machir, the son of Manash, had no sons, but only daughters, whose names were Mahalana, Noah, Hogala, Milka, and Tizah. They went to Elzer, the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, the Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our relatives. So Joshua gave them an inheritance along with the brothers of the, their father 
according to the Lord's command. Manesh's share consisted of ten tracts of land besides Galilee and Bashan, east of the Jordan, because the daughters of the tribe of Manesh received an inheritance among the sons, the land of Galid belonged to the rest of the descendants of Manesh. The territory of Manesh extended from Asher to Melchamethia, east of Shesham. The boundary ran southward from there to include the people living at En Tupa. Manesh had the land of Tupa, but Tupa itself on the boundary of Manesh belonged to the Ephraimites. Then the boundary continued south to the Cana Ravine. There were towns belonging to Ephraim lying among the towns of Manesh. But the boundary of Manesh was the northern side of the ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. On the southern side belonging to Ephraim on the north to Manesh, the territory of Manesh reached the Mediterranean Sea and bordered Asher, bordered Asher on the north and Ezekiah on the east. Within Ezekiah the and Asher, Manesh also had Bethshen, Ibalem, and the people of Dor, Endor, Tenech, and Megadero, together with their surrounding settlements. The third in the list is Naphtho. Yet, the Mennonites were not able to occupy these towns, for the Canaanites were determined to live in that region. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they subjected the Canaanites to forced labor but did not drive them out completely. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you given us only one allotment and one portion for the inheritance? We are a numerous people, and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are so numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of the Ephraim is too small for you, Go up into the forest and clear land for yourselves, there in the land of the Presuits and Raphites. The people of Joseph replied, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who live in the plain have chariots filled with iron, both those in Bethshan and its settlements, and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the tribes of Joseph, To Ephraim and Manesh, You are numerous and very powerful. You will have now not only one allotment, but the forest hill country as well. Clear it, and its furthest limits will be yours. Though the Canaanites have chariots filled with iron, and though they are strong, you can drive them out. Division of the rest of the land, Joshua 18. The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tents of meeting there. The country was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you? Appoint three men from each tribe. I will send them out to make a survey of the land and to write a description of it according to the inheritance of each. Then they will return to me. You are to divide the land into seven parts. Judah is to remain in its territory on the south 
and the tribes of Joseph in their territory on the north. After you have written descriptions of the seven parts of the land, bring them here to me, and I will cast lots for you in the presence of the Lord your God. The Levites, however, do not get a portion among you, because the priests, because the priestly service of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have already received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan. Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it to them. As the men started on their way to map out the land, Joshua instructed them, Go and make a survey of the land, and write a description of it. Then turn to me, then return to me. I will cast lots for you, and you here at Shiloh, in the presence of the Lord. So the men left, and went throughout the land. They wrote its descriptions on a scroll, town by town, in seven parts, and returned to Joshua in the camp of Shiloh. Joshua then cast lots for them in Shiloh in the presence of the Lord. And there he distributed the land to the Israelites according to their tribal divisions. Allotment for Benjamin. The first lot came up for the tribe of Benjamin according to its clans. Their lot allotted territory lay between the tribe of Judah and Joseph. On the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan, past the north, northern slope of Jericho, and headed west into the hill country, coming out at the wilderness of beth Avan. From there, it crossed to the south slope of Luz, that is Bethel, and went down to Atroth, Adar, on the hill south, on the hill south of Lower Bethharn. From the hill facing Bethharn, on the south, the boundary turned south along the west western side, and came out at Karath Bala, Baal, Karath Baal, that is Karath Jeremon a town of the people of Judah. This was the western side. The southern side began at the outskirts of Kerath, Jeremiah, on the west, and the boundary came out at the spring of the waters of Nephetota. The boundary went down to the foot of the hill, racing to the foot of the hill facing the valley of Ben Hanon, north of the valley of Rephim. It continued down the Hinnom Valley along the southern slope of the Jebizwit city, and so to Enrugal. It then curved north, went to Enchanam, Enchanam, and Shemesh continued to Gileoth, which faces the, p the pass of Adamanum, and ran down to the stones of Bahan, son of Reuben. It continued to the north northern slope of Beth Araba and on down into the Araba. It then went to the northern slope of Beth Hogala and came out at the northern bay of the Dead Sea at the mouth of the Jordan in the south. This was the southern boundary. The Jordan formed the boundary on, its, on the eastern side. These were the boundaries that marked out the inheritance of the clans of Benjamin on all sides. The tribe of Benjamin, according to its clans, had the following towns. Jericho, Beth Holga, Emkaziz, Beth Araba, Zemariam, Bethel, Evim, 
apara, apara, kepra, omni, opna, uh, openai, and geb, twelve towns and their villages. Gibeon, Rama, Beroth, Mesveth, Kepara, Moza, Rechem, April, Tarala, Zila, Hepalap, the Jesu Jesuit city that is Jerusalem, and Geba and Kerath. Fourteen towns and their villages. This was the inheritance of Benjamin for its clans. That completes Joshua 16 through 18. And now we'll move into Luke 2 1 through 24. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that had took place while Cornelius was governor of Cyrene. Sarai? Sarai. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Na to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom has favor, who peace to them who his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying the, and praising God for all these things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. Jesus presented in the temple. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be 
consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. That concludes Luke 12, uh, 2, 1 through 24, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe for the day. Tomorrow we will be covering Joshua 19 through 21 and Luke 2, 25 through 52. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe today. I am so glad that this could be a blessing to you and to God and to everyone out there. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said amen. Thanks for tuning in to the show. Um, this here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying, um, reading for you today. And I just might add, God bless you. You know God does. God loves you and so do I. So be blessed and come back and see me tomorrow. Because, well, I'll be here. And I hope that you are too.